Hello everyone, my name is Bottletop Hornet and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. Oh, I am doing a little bit of work trying to get some of this stone in for the, uh, the back end of this island that I made in the terraforming episode, but I've been working on it for quite a while now and I think it's time to take a break and continue to film some stuff. So... As I've said before, that building things like this actually generates ideas for necessity reasons. One of the things that I'm going to have to do very soon is blend this side of the uh, the mountain back down into the ocean. And to do that, it's going to require a lot of sandstone, so probably going to have to go collect some. But more to the point, it requires a lot of time spent underwater. Now, on the other side, I literally did all of that island there and all of the front of this without water breathing potions and without a conduit. And while I have been doing some work trying to get some Nautilus shells, I still don't have enough to make a conduit, and also the range on it is nowhere near big enough for the uh, scale of these things. So, for this episode, we're going to make a brewery. Br brewery? Why is that word so hard to say? Brewery. Br brewery? Brewery. Yeah. A potion making area. <laughs> We're going to make a potion making area or a brewery. Man, I, until this moment, have never realized how hard I find that word to say for some reason. An alchemist workshop. We're going to call it an alchemist workshop. <laughs> oh dear. So, what I would like to do, and I've been thinking about this a bit, is actually make a pond in the middle of this this island area here. So a nice detailed pond, something that looks pretty cool. And then in the middle of it, have a bubble column pulling us down into a hidden room underneath the bottom of this that has all of the stuff that we need for making the potions of any sort and uh, also little areas for extending or turning them into splash potions, etc. So... With that, we're going to very quickly pop into a time lapse at the start of this episode of me preparing the pond and probably the room down below because I want to spend more of this episode going over the, uh, the details and the actual idea and design behind the potion making itself rather than on the building part of things. So I hope you enjoy this time lapse and we'll get back into the meat of the episode after that. <laughs> See you on the other side. And welcome back in folks. So I've just paused before finishing off the build because we've got some stuff to do on camera before anything else, but have a look at that. This is sort of the level of detail that I would hope to eventually get on most of the islands, at least with the grass and a little bit of uh, greenery, but I really like the way this looks. If I just fly up into the air, I think it looks really nice, sits in there really nicely. And then if we come over here, you can't even see the bubbles, probably because my particle effects, but we come on down <laughs> into danger. 
<laughs> that's one of the only spawnable spaces, I'd say, is on top of those. But that's only temporary, so we'll just put some lights over there for now. So this in here is going to be our little alchemist area. I want to put a nether wart growing farm in here. Just a, a cozy little one. It doesn't have to produce a lot. It just needs to produce enough for me to use personally. I want to put some storage along this back wall for the different types of potions. And then we'll have some brewing stations and stands and whatnot on this side. So I decided after getting most of the roof done and the idea of the shape of it all sorted... The connection down here and also a way in and out if we want to through the water we can do a little bit of detailing to make that look a little less boxy but as you can see i can fly in through if i want to to get down nice and easily and grab some potions when i need them so i'm gonna go get actually i might have the stuff in here for it somewhere no it seems i've used most of my slabs but i should be able to make up a few barrels Let's start with six. And basically over here, what I'm going to do is go one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and yeah. Hmm. Let's actually go two off the wall and then a single space in between. And that should space it with a gap. Cool. So I'll do the same as that on the other side once I move these things. And then we might put another barrel above for the ingredients that are required for each one of those uh, potions. So we'll have a lower barrel that stores the potions themselves. We can have a sign of something above showing its effect. And then above that, we can have the required ingredients for it. Then over here near the brewing station, we're going to have stuff like gunpowder, the nether wart, uh, redstone, and then the glowstone as well. So the different components that we need for actually crafting the, the potions themselves. Ooh, and uh, what's the other one? Blaze powder. <laughs> we need blaze powder. So I think this episode, we're going to work on getting the brewing part of it set up and uh, get our storage and whatnot organized. And then I think in the next episode, we might actually go back into the nether and it's been a long while since I've been over there or really thought about doing anything with it. But if I want myself a reliable source of blaze powder, depending on how much of the uh, actual brewing that I'm doing, <laughs> that rhymed. we can head on over, if I'll just let this load, to our double blaze spawner that we have over in this, this fortress here. So if I just go like this, get myself up here, be careful of the big boy over there. What a shot. I better be careful. I don't want to kill those pigmen, but we have our double blaze spawner just over here, which is... Amazing find. I'm really blown away by this seed, to be honest. And while we could just do stuff like that to uh, get ourselves blaze rods and probably get enough for our needs, at the same time, why not do a little bit of building and make a new farm? The thing is, if our bamboo isn't enough to power our super smelter, we could potentially set this up to uh, get the blaze rods and use them for our super smelter over there, because blaze rods are actually a really good fuel source. I think they burn something like around 20 blocks uh, per rod. And if we see here, it's hard to tell with that piglin in the way. Those aren't moving. But if we go forward to there, I think, and there, on this central point of the, uh, of the crossroads here, both of them are actually active at the same time. So I'm just going to bail on that <laughs> because I don't want to get shot too much. But I suppose my point is that's the perfect area for the double blaze spawner. We can set it up so we stand in the one spot and both blaze spawners are active at the same time and we should be able to get a decent supply. So I'm going to gather up a few resources, get myself some barrels and try and work out what potions I will actually want to be crafting on a regular basis. And then we'll head on over and uh, see what we can do about organizing a little storage area as well as creating the potion brewing area. So let me get those and I'll meet you back over at the alchemist workshop. Okay, so if we look at the things that I need as far as the brewing part of it, not the ingredients for the different types, but just purely the brewing, I think we have gunpowder for splash potions, the nether wart, of course, for making most of the potions themselves, redstone for extending the duration of a potion, glowstone for improving the level or the amount of, uh, what would you call it, power behind it, and then, of course, the blaze powder, but I just used the three blaze rods that I have. Yeah, okay, I need to go grab a couple of blaze rods real quick. Just swoop on down through here. I'm getting pretty good at flying through that little hallway. There we go. So we got ourselves some blaze rods, which we can use for fuel, and let's just duck down there. Perfect. So, 
We'll just put them there without being blaze powder for now, but that essentially represents the five components for crafting different types of potions. Now, I think we can use Dragon's Breath if we wanted to, but I'm not exactly sure how that works, and eh, I don't know if I'll really use it that often for the lingering potions, but we'll add it in here at some point just in case, because I do have some over in the storage room. Now, if that's going to be our growing area for our different uh, netherite, no, for our nether warts. And I think what I might also do is make a little spot in the middle where I think the light level is potentially low enough to see if I can get some brown mushrooms to spread because that is very important for making stuff like our weakness potions for uh, converting our villages over there. So I need to work out a way to get these uh, brewing stands set up. I think I'm just going to go with three set up so that I can do a decent amount, so nine potions at a time. And that would mean that essentially if I have a shulker box that I want to fill up with potions, or more to the point, these barrels over here, in one 20 second uh, batch of brewing, or well, it's a little bit more than 20 seconds, but one batch of brewing, I have enough to create a full line of a barrel. So I think having the three in the middle here doesn't quite fit uh, with our... Oh, it will fit. I thought I had this set up to be central, but <laughs> it looked wrong for a second. So just like that, we should be able to put one there, one there, and one there-ish. I'm going to have to come up with a little bit of an altar and uh, a design for that. And then I think as far as the storage for these items here, we'll put one close-ish for the uh, fuel itself and then something like that. Yeah, have ourselves set up with some gunpowder, redstone, and glowstone. Then we can put our probably our nether wart there and our blaze rods or more to the point our blaze powder there then just using these to represent the brewing stands we would have something like that something like that actually so we have our central setup so that when we come down through here we can see it straight away we know what we're aiming for we have our storage for our components for the actual potion themselves there and our ingredients for the different types of potions can be set up on these different walls as well as the storage for them. Cool. Okay, I think I'm getting my head around my own idea right now, but at the same time, hopefully it's explaining it to you guys what my plan for this area is. Now, what I want to do is think about what I want from my uh, potions. One of the main ones, of course, is going to be if I decide to expand or use more of my villages over there in the villager trading hall, I want to be able to cure them. So we have the brown mushrooms will be combined with the spider eyes and some sugar. That's our weakness potions. I believe that the gas tears are for regeneration. We don't have many right now, but we might be able to go farming some ghasts or even set up a ghast farm. I don't think I'll ever need that many though, so it would probably just be farming them by flying around and killing them. Phantom membranes. <laughs> really haven't had a lot of trouble with phantoms because I sleep a lot, but we can build up a little supply of that if we want some slow falling just for safety in the end. Magma cream for fire protection, but I think it's something that I would probably skip because I get more than enough fire protection from our gold farm. Puffer fish for water breathing, sugar for speed potions, and I can't quite remember what strength potions are made out of. Let me do a quick Google. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just had to check, but I do remember now it is just more blaze powder itself. So we would have uh, a little bit of that. What I might do is actually just convert that into blaze powder. So yep, we have weakness potions, regeneration, slow fall, water breathing, speed, strength. But one of the things that we would want is a regeneration, which we can quite easily get from our melon farm combined with our gold farm. So we want some glistening melons. I don't have any there because it's all over in the trading hall, of course. So we'll fly down here and grab just a stack of that to represent it. Plenty in there, always. I'm still trying to uh, catch up and, and beat the speed of this thing. Slowly getting it down into that one chest, but deal with that in a second. We should just have a little bit of gold in here. Wonderful. Definitely enough. And then I just reminded myself by eating in the air just then, one of the other things that we can use is the golden carrots for the night vision. So, make a little bit more room here. Actually, we'll do it in a barrel because it makes more sense to be able to see it a little bit clearer. So we have our potion of weakness. We have our regeneration, slow falling, water breathing, speed, strength. Then we have our regeneration and night vision. And at the same point, I think there is a way to com to change the night vision over to an invisibility. So yes, if we add together the 
uh, fermented spider eye that we get from this combination here with our golden carrots there. So just do this for a representation. That way we have nine different potions that we definitely want. I think I would like all of these things. The night vision is great for if I'm doing work underwater. It makes it a lot easier to see while I don't have the conduit. Water breathing, of course. Some of these things are just situational for stuff that I will want when I'm going on missions out to the end. It's nice to just have a slow falling in case I don't want to be bothered using a bunch of rockets. And the speed and whatnot and the uh, strength are good for when I'm taking on the wither or just going to a dangerous area that I know I might have to defend myself. Now it would be really nice to add one more and I will just do a little bit of thinking while I'm doing all this so that we could have five and five on either side make it a nice even number, but that's not a bad plan. So what I think I'm going to do is just do a quick 10 second time lapse of me setting up the uh, the details of the walls, setting up the uh, barrels and whatnot for storage, and then we'll pop back in and see if we can get it all brewing, make this little farm, and yeah, we should have a nice little brewing area. I've got to stop saying brewing because I'm going to have the same slip up that I had at the start of the episode, so. <laughs> Alchemist workshop. <laughs> All right, enjoy that 10 second time lapse, folks, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> The tropical fish are dying. They're coming through. <laughs> oh dear. I've had a couple of dolphins come through here as well and some drowns. So we'll have to see how that works out. But I do like it uh, as an entry and exit. It's just, uh, it is funny that stuff comes through. So here we go. I've uh, organized some of the storage, gotten some of the items in there ready to go. Haven't really stocked all of it though. And these signs are ready for once we get the potions in there, I can name them and have that there so I can see it at a glance. We have our brewing stands, we have our storage over this side for putting in the, the items for brewing, and over here I've actually made myself three spots to bring over a villager, or villagers for that matter, so that I can have a librarian in here that I can trade glass to make the uh, the bottles for doing this. We have these fountains here that, while also decorational to uh, fill up the space, are a spot where I can get the water for filling the bottles up. I would like a cleric for getting redstone and i think i can buy glowstone from them as well which i can just break uh, to get the glowstone dust and then a farmer over in this one which will trade me the golden carrots and i think i should go check i think they might sell glistening melons as well now i would never want that for eating purposes but for the potion purposes if i can get myself a a farmer that has them both that'd be amazing I'm pretty sure all farmers default to getting... Yeah, okay, cool. What about him? Yes. Looks like they do. So it looks like they default to getting those as their final trades, which is perfect. That means that when I get myself a farmer over there, I just have to get them up to master level. And we've got the golden carrots and the glistening melons as well. Wonderful. <laughs> so I'll have to get those over there at some point and uh, train them up or trade them up, I should say, to uh, get myself hopefully one with a glass trade, like a couple of these have over here. That's the main thing that I need. And then we'll have access to all of those things straight over there in the Alchemist lab. Now, the only thing left to do in there is to grab some soul sand. Might grab a little bit of this nether brick as well to uh, build with. Put away a few things over here while I'm here. Um, what else do I need? I think that should be it for now. So let's pop back over there. Doesn't matter that it's getting dark because it's all inside under here. So we'll just get in. There we go. And we'll try and convert that end section into a bit of a farm. Now my idea is, as you can see, I'm going to expand this a little bit. I think I might try and make a little tunnel down here that just has the ideal light levels for growing mushrooms. So we might go a couple more wide, like so. Get down into that area, grab ourselves a little bit of stone just to patch this up. We'll go out this direction a little bit, and uh, then I'll, I'll check the light levels using the F3 menu. And I believe that the mushrooms will grow at under a light level of 12. So as long as I'm above eight, which is the, uh, the minimum required light level to stop spawning, of, uh, of mobs and then under 12 we should have a safe little area down here that mushrooms can grow in and yeah it'll be a perfect little spot something like that so what i will do is just place a couple of 
lights. Maybe there and there. We'll do a little test. So if I go back into this area, I'll put a little light. Block level 7 in the middle, so not quite enough. But instead, I will just go across like so. Block level is 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's great. That means that all of these squares, one back from here, should be a low enough light level, or at least these back uh, three across there, to grow ourselves some mushrooms. So I think... Yeah, I've got a couple here. I'll just put them down, and while we're building this uh, area, we'll see whether any of them grow. And now it's as simple as placing down a couple of these to grow our nether wart on, which I'll just plant straight away. Oh, look at that. All these uh, things that I just still haven't got the uh, achievements for again. Now, we might change that in a second, but for a final edge on this, oh, this might not exactly work. No, it won't. Hmm. I'm going to have to rethink this. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so maybe we go for a terraced look and build it something like that. And then if we put these across the face, we still get that effect. We can grow it in there, then over on this side, cover that up as well. Yeah, that's not too bad. And that should honestly be plenty. Oh, I'm in the fountain. That should be plenty for uh, my needs. For how often I'm going to come down here, that'll just keep growing. I might come down every now and again, harvest it, and then replant it, and we shouldn't have any problems. Now, it's just a matter of adding in some uh, walls like this, I believe, will look all right. We might change it up just a little bit to put in some dirt or something, or some coarse dirt down there, change up the flooring so that it's more like swampy, a little bit more to the, the idea of growing mushrooms, and these are a form of mushroom as well, in my opinion. And yeah, then this whole area will be built. <laughs> I, I really like it. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments as well. Mostly, it should be spawn-proof, except for possibly this spot here. So I'll just have to uh, see how that goes. Maybe put some buttons on there or something. But as far as functionality, it's a nice big hall, an, an alchemist hall. We have the stuff for all of our potions that we will want. And I just used this last one. Instead of finding another potion, I used it for storing uh, water bottles. Uses up that as well. This might be for uh, storing dragon's breath or something. And just really didn't try too hard. It's a, a very basic build, very rectangular, not a lot of depth except for a little bit over here. And it's more designed for functionality because for how often we're going to come down here, it's not really, uh, it's not really required to be the best looking part of my base, but I think it is nice regardless. So I'm going to quickly just tidy up the end of that and uh, see if I can come up with a design for the floor. And then we'll pop back in and see whether everything is working. <laughs> it'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be a nice little project. All done and dusted. Okay, let's finish that little end. <laughs> yeah, a little something like that. <laughs> that doesn't look too bad. It's definitely filled in the color and uh, the end of that a little bit more, which is nice. Ooh, I... Apparently washed that away while I was doing a bunch of the different things. But we've got ourselves a little bit of the nether wart growing. Hopefully, I washed them away, so we'll have to <laughs> wait and see again. Hopefully, we have some of the uh, mushrooms grow in here as well. And the alchemist workshop is done, I think. A few small little things that I might change, like uh, this, for example. That looks better. <laughs> but minor details that over time... I will uh, see the faults in my build and come to learn what I want to change. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. And I think, to be honest, we're not going to do anything more in here this episode. I would like to next episode go and do the double blaze spawner. And once we have a decent supply of that blaze rods, then I would come back here and uh, test out all the potion making. So I think I'll just thank my Patreon supporters, especially Tom, my level 3 supporter. I really do appreciate it, man. Your continued support is amazing and to everybody else who's watching this i appreciate you all so much if you enjoyed the episode make sure you leave a like uh, subscribe if you haven't already and i hope you're looking forward to more episodes to come we're gonna tackle a blaze spawner build and then come back and test out our potion making in this area in the next episode so until then i hope you take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next one <laughs> bye guys whoop